All right, we are at the top of the hour, 4 p.m. Uh, our last session of the day, uh, Big Talk from Libraries 2023, and I would say appropriately, appropriately enough for the end of the day, close to the evening, we're going to prom. <laughs> Zombie prom. Uh, zombie prom, <laughs> absolutely. Um, and on, um, depending on your point of view, no zombies were harmed in the making of this teen event. Okay. <laughs> uh, so, um, with us for our last today is our other Nebraska presenting presenters um, for today's uh, conference. Um, nice to wrap up with one of our our, our locals. Um, Go Nebraska. Amanda <laughs> Winkler and Chelsea Faust, both from our Morton James Public Library in Nebraska City. Nebraska, and their prop served is uh, 7,900. Is that where you all are at still? Yes, the Morton James Public Library is in southeastern Nebraska. Our actual population is about 7,200, but then we, we also service other rural areas around um, in our mm. county. Sure, sure. Great. All right, so I will hand it over to both of you to tell us about um, your awesome zombie prom that you um, had last year. <laughs> Well, thank you so much, Krista. Really excited. Um, so who we are, my name is Amanda. I'm the Youth Services Manager here at the Morton James Public Library, and I've been in this position for about four years now. And I'm Chelsea, and I'm the Assistant Director here at Morton James, and I've been here for a little over a year. And the Morton James Public Library, like we said, is in southeastern Nebraska. It was established in 1897, so we just uh, last year celebrated our 125th years of service um, and we're still in our original building from 1897 so that's pretty cool mm -hmm. another staff member, building too for anybody who wants to visit <laughs> yeah, come and see us for sure <laughs> um, another staff member we'll be referencing is Chloe she's our Gen Z staff member that helped us put uh, this program together so we will be referencing Chloe quite a bit so she's here in spirit but my name is Amanda <laughs> and, and I'm Chelsea <laughs> Okay, so first of all, why did we want to present? Well, teen programming is hard, and we wanted to present to give you some hope for teen programming. Um, it's probably one of our biggest blocks in programming is trying to get teens in our building and doing something that they enjoy. So when we first um, started planning Zombie Prom, we planned for 50, and that was pretty generous, and we ended up with 120, which hmm. blew our minds. <laughs> um, we uh, thought uh, with the 120, we thought, okay, we thought we would have more adult or high school kids, but instead we just had more um, middle schoolers. However, the reason we had more middle schoolers is because our building shares a parking lot with the middle school and we get a fairly rowdy after school crowd that comes in and we started chatting with them. Chloe was instrumental in that and asking what they wanted um, what they thought would be fun, and they were very talkative. And then word of mouth was huge. They would tell their friends, their friends would come in, we would talk to them, then they would tell their friends, and it just completely exploded, which is amazing. Um, so if you feel like you're at a standstill, you have hope because this program went really well. Yeah, and we really had no teen events for two years with COVID, and before that, our teen programming was not very well attended and we would very often we would have to include tweens like in that 10, 10 to 12 area because just so few actual teens were coming. So so there is hope, yes. Um, so that kind of gets us into the idea. So I, I found a picture of another library zombie prom and I thought that that sounded really amazing. Um, I had sort of just taken on these services, and so I was just putting as many ideas as I could into my folder. So the zombie prom got put into my ideas folder, and I was so excited for 2020. I was like, it's going to be the roaring 20s. We're going to bring really cool, fun stuff to the library. And then COVID had other ideas. <laughs> so zombie prom pretty much got shelved for two years. Um, but it was great timing because after that, uh, Chloe came onto our staff and she's a Gen Z staff member and I'm not hip to the young people. So I thought a zombie prom sounded like fun. Um, but when I was doing the idea for the program, it was going to be more like weird zombie food, like let's make a brain out of jello or like there's 
recipes that look like rotting body parts. And I thought that would be kind of fun. So I had kind of all these off the wall ideas, but Chloe said, you know, what's tried and true? Pizza, we like pizza. And she had been talking to the kids and they wanted to do a dance. So like the zombie prom dance idea was also something that we wanted to do. And Halloween is a pretty big attendance for our youth programming. So we thought, okay, let's put it all together. Pizza, a dance and Halloween and with the teens right next door. So we decided on having um, some other activities that went along with the dance. So we had zombie makeup, we had a costume contest. We also had karaoke. So part of the, the time was just a dance with music playing. And then we had a sign up for karaoke. We did book drawings. We had a button making station. And then we gave away glow sticks, pizza, Sprite, and a lot of candy. A lot. A lot. <laughs> candy was probably the best. Yes. Uh, the best thing. But uh, the biggest lesson here was that is what tried and true works. And it's better to keep things simple and do it well um, if it's your first time doing something like zombie prom. Yeah. And wait for that feedback and then change as needed. So planning. Our first thought was budget. Do we have the money for this? Where can we get the money for this? Um, so we have many generous donors who give specifically for youth programming. So our budget done, was done all through donations. Um, mm -hmm. Things that we purchased, uh, we did purchase a karaoke Bluetooth speaker with microphones, mm -hmm. um, makeup, fake blood, sponges for the makeup. We bought pizza, soda, the uh, soda themed cups like with the you can see in the picture with the handprints and the tablecloth and the plates. Um, we purchased gift cards for the costume contest uh, for the winners. Uh, we bought a crown for that, just a cheap plastic fancy crown. And then we also bought flameless candles, which you can see in the picture there. Um, we did have some things already on hand, like our button maker we got from the Nebraska Library Commission makerspace. Mm -hmm. um, we printed pronoun buttons, which was a specific request from the kiddos. They wanted to have their pronouns on buttons. And then we chose, um, since it was Halloween time and zombie themed, Nightmare Before Christmas characters. We um, also had glow sticks and we had some books that we could give away. Um, we did have some decorations since this was around Halloween. We had our regular Halloween dec decorations. We did purchase some, but we had a lot. Um, and then for the makeup, you definitely need Q-tips and paper towels. It's something we didn't think about, but luckily we have it. Um, with that, we did purchase um, some extra like lights, plug-in lights and um, vines for like decor, but we use those in a future teen program that we had had. So we reused a lot of the stuff that we purchased. And the Bluetooth speaker we've used multiple so much times since yes. we bought it. Yeah. Yes. And we do plan on doing just a karaoke night in the future. So it was a good purchase. Um, we had six staff members or we had, yes, had six staff members working at the time, but only three of us um, planned out and actually did the program and um, we did have a volunteer as well and I will recommend more volunteers is always better. <laughs> yeah. Um, layout for our zombie prom. We are we limited the rooms that we wanted to have available. So we had our gallery space which is 50 by 20 feet and then our lobby area where you first come in the doors. And then we mapped out different stations within those two rooms. Marketing was big. We um, put posters up in the middle school, posters in the library. We did Facebook, Instagram, our newsletter. We made pamphlets, um, our website. We were really like, we haven't had teens in. We felt like we had to just like shout it from yes, the rooftops. Yes, for sure. We did have a display table in our lobby that we set up with like, um, like a swamp zombie theme with a little ball that you could touch. And it, yeah, like, like the electricity, electricity goes. Yeah. yeah. Oh, yeah. Um, yeah, it was really cool. So it draw it would draw your attention when you first walked in and then we had like our come to our zombie prom and then our Halloween party as well. So that was big. If you have a space in your library, you can set up just like 
a little display table with pamphlets or whatever it is that you have, do so. Because we had more people talking about it because of that table than probably anything. So hmm. that was really big. And when the kids come in after school, right in the thing, like it kind of became like a ritual after school. I got to touch the ball. Yeah. And then. And then, oh, so are we still having zombie prom? When yeah, is that? Yeah. yeah. It, it worked out really well. Um, and then one thing with our marketing is we made sure to emphasize that everything was 13, ages 13 and older because we didn't want to do too much of the tween. We wanted the older kids. And then we also emphasized dress code appropriate because that was something that we didn't want to have issues with what the kids were wearing. So in our marketing, we made sure and word of mouth, we told everybody, make sure that, you know, it's school dress code appropriate. Yeah. And they knew what that meant. So like they would ask like some of, I think we're joking, but they're like, oh, can I wear this or can I wear that? And I would just say it has to be school dress code appropriate. And we didn't have any problems at all with that. So it worked out really well. And then we had the younger kids were like, well, I'm 12, I'll be 13. And they were really excited about it. So they still talk about, well, I'm almost that old. So it worked out really well, making sure that we had that on all of our marketing. And that actually, yeah, that did go well. Like it, it, it kind of didn't turn into a thing like, oh, like we're sorry, like 13 and older. Like it actually kind of worked out. Yeah, pretty they're well. like, well, I'll be 13 in two years and then you're gonna do it, right? Yeah, and like, like yeah, you can do, come then. Do zombies so, problem. yeah. But now it has really. to be an annual thing. You're stuck, you're stuck with it. Exactly. <laughs> yeah. They're gonna expect it. <laughs> All right, so execution. Um, prepping definitely made the event go much more smoothly. Um, fortunately, it was around Halloween time. So when we started like hanging up bats and spider webs, people weren't too freaked out. So we kind of decorated. <laughs> Um, ahead of time, but we also used that space um, for the youth Halloween party the next day. So our youth Halloween party is always like a really big attendance every year. So we we always like prepare for the Halloween party. So doing the zombie prom the day before, we could put out kind of more the the brains and the eyeballs and stuff, and then we just took those down for that youth party the next day. But we still had like a lot of the bats and spider webs and stuff. Yeah. Um, so we did make it pretty um, non-structured for the most part. So like we had the music playing and they could go to the button maker when they wanted to. They could line up for the makeup when they wanted to. But we did have signups for a few things. So we had signups for the karaoke and we also had signups for the costume contest. So the signups for the karaoke was really so that Chloe could go through and find clean versions of the songs um, and also just songs and for the karaoke aspect of it ahead of time. And then for the uh, best costume, we actually had to take their picture, post it on Instagram, and then we did the likes, the hearts on the Instagram is how they voted for it. So it was easier to have a sign up so that when it was time to take pictures, we, we could do that a little yeah. more easily. And it was easier to be like, oh, so-and-so, you need to come get your picture taken so that we can get you on Instagram at this time. So the signups for that really helped. And then we had enough time that people could like so that they could vote for it. Um, our staff, like we said, we had uh, three staff people and we had one volunteer. Um, next year, we will definitely have more. I mean, granted, we were only preparing for 50, but next year we will want more. And we had our volunteer doing the button maker, and then Chelsea was doing zombie makeup. Yep. Um, Chloe was running the music, and then I was doing the food. And then also uh, the food in the area was where the dance was happening as well. So that then we had two staff members in there to kind of keep an eye on everything because the lights were out. You can kind of see in that photo. Um, so we did want to have like two people in the dance area. Um, and the party was from six to eight. Um, we started to ask kids to wrap up about 15 minutes to eight, um, but we'll kind of get there later that the kids were still hanging around far after eight o'clock so and we'll, one thing i will add for that is when we used instagram for the likes or the hearts however you want to say that um our wi-fi stat logins went through the roof and we took a couple months before we realized why is this number so high and we had zombie prom with every teenager with a phone and then we had the halloween party the next night which also every parent had a phone to take pictures so it mm -hmm. it really helps like with login stats. You can yeah, if you need it. your Wi-Fi to yeah. go just have a zombie. 
Yeah. It was awesome. Oh, actually, I actually have a question about the costume contest there. Since you're mentioning that now, um, I'll I'll do that now. Um, so the costume contest when they vote on Instagram, that was just during the actual event, not like any time afterwards. It was Correct. just during, so they only voted during the actual prom. We uploaded photos to Instagram while the prom was going on, and then we let kids vote until seven, like fifteen, I think it was. Yeah, actually, seven. I think it was seven thirty. It might it have been seven thirty. Yeah. So we would just let tell them you could award it right at the at the event and everything. Perfect. Yeah. yeah. And then we went on Instagram and saw who had the most hearts, and then we presented them with a crown and their gift cards. Yeah. 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 And the prizes were scooters, gift cards. We have a scooters coffee here in Nebraska City. So first place was $15, second place was $10, and third place was $5. Yep. And the crown, which they loved. <laughs> yeah. Everybody wanted the crown. So yeah. <laughs> Maybe we could have saved money on coffee cards. We could have just bought just a gave crown. crown. <laughs> So we'll go through some photos here. So um, this so, is the makeup yep. table. This, this the is makeup. zombie makeup. This is what I did. Um, it was actually very popular. Uh, the kids were super excited about how real it looked. And um, behind on the first picture, you can see all the vines hanging in the door and the lights. That's where we took all the photos um, for Instagram. And then we did like it was a selfie station. Um, so as I was sitting there doing makeup, anyone can go behind and take pictures. And then all the way to the right is our winner. That was our costume contest winner. Um, you can see the crown, obviously, and she's wearing one of the buttons that she made. And then that's the bag that we gave out for first place. Um, the kiddo in the top picture, he was very funny. He came back twice for makeup because he thought he needed more blood. <laughs> so that was <laughs> Fun. Um, some of the kids did come back and was like, can you do another wound? And I'm like, sure, if there's nobody waiting. Mm -hmm. um, I, I will say we had a light that we found on the our storage area in the library, and that was really helpful. It's not something you would think about, but once it got dark outside, that light was mm -hmm. essential in trying to see what you were doing. So um, it was a good setup, and um, the good thing about where we were sitting, you'll see another picture where you'll see the button maker. Um, the kids were able to, like, just hang out around the zombie table makeup so they could watch their friends get zombified. So <laughs> that worked really well. And I think it was cool, too, because some of the kids didn't wear costumes, so then the makeup option, they could. But then a lot of the kids that did wear costumes or even already had done their makeup still wanted yes, their yeah. makeup. It, it worked out really well and it, more so than I assumed at first because I was like, nobody wants to get makeup done while they're at a zombie prom, but oh, everyone yeah. did. So it worked really well. There's another view. That's our volunteer, Stephanie, and she ended up getting zombified. She really enjoyed it. And then you'll see in the first picture, there's a table behind her and that is where the button making was. Mm -hmm. um, so, and then just behind that is where you come into the door or into the library. Um, so yeah, it, our setup actually worked out pretty good. And those uh, window clings are the, the hands. Yeah, those were really popular, especially since we put them up a few days in advance and then people would be like, what are these about? <laughs> well, we're having a zombie prom. So word of mouth. Yeah, and yeah, and the decorations really were when we were kind of slowly putting everything up, people would see new things had showed up and been yeah. like, what is that? So it's another good way to generate interest. So in our Kimmel gallery space where we had the dance, um, we had uh, we needed more lights. Like we had the candles and we had like Christmas lights, but we needed even more light. So we projected the nightmare before Christmas onto our onto our screen, but we didn't have the sound. So the music that was playing was like popular music that the kids like that Chloe knew to play, um, which got good feedback. So yay, Chloe. Um, <laughs> but then I'm surprised because The Nightmare Before Christmas came out when I was a kid. So I'm really surprised that the kids are all about Tim Burton and The Nightmare Before Christmas. But uh, it was a good ambiance to just add to have that like visual and the light like while they're dancing. It was actually pretty cool. Mm -hmm. And we do have the rights to show it in the library as the film. Mm -hmm. So that wasn't a problem either, but um, but yeah, there was no sound on the movie, just the the movie being projected at the front, which was pretty I think cool. it's one of those eternal movies that will always just be popular. New people yes, keep watching it and sure. it never will never go away. <laughs> yeah, I agree with that. 
And then those are our gift bags that we had for the for the winners of the costume contest. So this is kind of the room split in half. So this was on one side of the room and then on the other. So we had the food on, on one side. And then I will talk about the book giveaways um, a little bit later, but we also had that table there that had the book drawings um, and the book giveaways. Um, and then the other table behind had little things that we gave away like bubbles and stickers and like little zombie men. So like, you know, the army men, but they mm -hmm. were zombies. <laughs> they um, were super yeah. cool. <laughs> but they didn't all get taken because the lights were out. And so I don't think they saw that they were all there. So maybe next time we can be a little bit clearer about that. So this is just kind of more uh, pictures of when the prom is going on. On the left side is the, um, or I guess, I don't know, left, right, on <laughs> what you're seeing, but the kids doing the karaoke with that screen. So once the dance part was over, we used that screen also to project the lyrics for the, for the songs. And then um, you can see the kids have some glow sticks and stuff there. And the one thing we will point out, um, we did buy flameless candles specifically for this event and we ended up using them for others. However, we just went to the Christmas light bucket that we have and behind all the kids in the second picture, you can see the lights spread out. That was very helpful, something we kind of did on a whim, but since the lights were out and once it got dark, we needed that extra light. So little things that you don't think about when you're setting up for something, but that really helped a lot. And then of course the glow sticks are fun and they could carry them around and throw them around and have fun. So this is a fuzzy picture, but it kind of gives a, a better idea. I mean, this was before all the, before the sun too, yeah, had gone yeah. down, um, but that's a little bit better of a picture, but it got even darker than that. Like, yeah. Uh, this was right before the party really got underway, so I was kind of snapping pictures as I could, but it got a lot darker. Um, so, and the kids were using their cell phones, too, to, to show things. And I think they were kind of rooting their friend on who was singing here, I think. Um, yeah. Because these are all karaoke pictures. And it was cool, like, once they got their makeup done and then they went in the room where it was dark and shined the cell phone light on, it was more gruesome. So, it and then it was exciting. They'd come back out and be like, I need more blood or look at this. It was really cool. All right, so for next year, what worked? Our button maker blew us away with how much the kids wanted to do the buttons, and we ran out of supplies. We, of course, wow. planned for 50. Um, and we had choices. So, like, we had so many choices because we wanted people to be able to choose, but then that was the only reason we really were able to provide so many. Yeah. Because they all got Because we, we – had planned for 50, but then we had extra supplies and then we had way more than we needed for button, like the inserts. And then mm -hmm. we ran out of everything. And they're like, where's more buttons? And we're like, let's do makeup. <laughs> <laughs> so the button maker is a big one and it's a very, fairly inexpensive um, tool to have in your library. Oh, yeah. So, and we're gonna use it for the next, I, any next programming that we do, which worked out well. Um, I will say for the button maker, we did, I told you we had um, pronoun buttons and Tim Burton, but we also did Heartstopper buttons, which is a book series by Alice Osman. Osman. Um, and that was super popular. If you don't have the Heartstopper books in your library, think about getting them. They're, they go out all the time. Um, so pizza, food, soda, obviously popular. Kids want the food. Uh, we ran out of pizza fairly early. Um, but it wasn't like, we're out of pizza, we need pizza. It was just like, oh, there's candy. So we did run <laughs> out, but they were okay. <laughs> well, that, okay, okay, glad you explained that, because someone did actually ask that question, what happened when you ran, did, did you have to quick order more out. pizza if you were, yeah. It's it's like they didn't even notice that the pizza was gone. Yeah, they would kind of wander over and be like, oh, is, are we out of pizza? What they did ask for, though, was candy. Yes, we I ran had, out of candy. Like, I had kids like, well, can you go look in the other part of the <laughs> yeah. library for more candy? And I'm like, I don't have there any must be candy. some. You must be hiding it somewhere. <laughs> right, right, because that's that's what we do is we hide stuff from the kiddos. <laughs> well, and I did. I broke into my candy stash because I have, like, a candy stash that, like, you know, for kids that come in or whatever, or for giveaways and stuff, and I... I went and got it and gave it to them. So I was trying to accommodate them with the candy, but they were actually more 
upset about the candy running out yeah. of the pizza. Although I will say they did ask for more soda too. And that's something that we plan in the future. We will order, or order, we will buy more soda than what we think, which we did. But again, we had planned for 50 being generous and, mm -hmm. and went over that. So yeah, the pizza, for whatever reason, it was awesome. They loved it, but they weren't like super upset. Like nobody actually even, they're like, oh, okay, the pizza's gone. And that kind of surprised me. I, I guess I thought they'd be hungrier than what they were yeah. because even when I had the pizza out, it's not like they ascended on the pizza no. like piranhas. Like they were just kind of like, oh, pizza. <laughs> yeah. But the candy, they were like. Yes. The candy was like, reach in, grab more. <laughs> um, so yeah, keep that in mind. Like obviously have the food, but don't stress too much because they just want candy. <laughs> Um, we makeup was very popular again it, I was surprised because I just assumed nobody would want to sit and have their makeup done especially if they were already dressed up but right. that was not the but case. that was not the case they came not dressed up and then wanted their makeup done um, the karaoke was also very popular and um, we are like I said earlier we're planning just a karaoke night in the future and then I will add for the makeup we didn't have a mirror to show them what it looked like when it was done. And that was oh. after I got done with the first kid, I was like, oh. So I grabbed my phone, took a picture and turned it around, which they uh -huh. love. Because who doesn't love getting their picture taken when they've got zombie makeup on? <laughs> so it, it was a good like instant, here, here's what you look like. So a mirror would be another thing to get for mm -hmm. the future. While you're talking and, about the makeup, we do have some questions about that. Before sure, you. yeah. Um, where, how did you learn how to do that? You totally said this was going to come up too. I, told you. <laughs> I was a cosmetologist before I started working in a library. So I went to school for your skin and makeup. Um, and and I, you've seen some gnarly stuff. So yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and I, uh, when I worked in a salon, we did a zombie um, 5K one year and we totally went all out with the makeup. So I had known about the toilet paper and the liquid latex, you make mix it together and you can make like 3D skin kind of, and it's a super cheap way to do it. You don't have to use like the fake, whatever that stuff is that they use for skin. Um, stuff, yeah. Yeah. So yeah, I, I kind of had an in, so I kind of knew what I was doing. But YouTube has tons of videos and mm. you can always get lots of different um, tips and tricks from, from professionals on YouTube. And it's really easy to, you could even use Elmer's glue if you don't wanna get liquid latex. It doesn't dry as fast, but it'll still work. And then just pour mm. some fake blood on it and it looks awesome. So, <laughs> but wow, yeah. That's what, yeah, that's what they're looking for. Yeah, so, so what, did you, what did you purchase to do the makeup? So that's a good question. We ordered a bruise kit. So it's like a little um, compact looking thing that has like the different colors of like blue and white and red and uh, brown, I think. And mm -hmm. then just using sponges, you just kind of, where well, you put the liquid latex on and the toilet paper, kind of shape it a little bit so it looks like a scratch or something. Then you use a sponge to put the bruise stuff around it and then just use um, fake blood with a Q-tip and kind of dab it on. Cause don't pour, that will go everywhere. Yeah. I learned the hard way. <laughs> so that's, so that's nice that there's a kit that people who don't know, don't have the skill can. <laughs> yes, absolutely. And it, like I said, there's tricks and tips and stuff online. And even with the bruise kit, it tells you like what to mix and how to put it on there. And you just kind of think of what a bruise looks like and go from there. It's don't like make it scare you. It's it. It's not super easy, but it's, you can learn. Mm -hmm. And someone else has a suggestion that Pinterest has a lot of zombie makeup ideas and how to's as well. Yes, Pinterest, you're, the Google is your friend. Yeah, yeah. the internet. <laughs> um, oh, the sponges for each kid? Yes, that was something else I, um, I only know from being a cosmetologist, you don't wanna reuse sponges or Q-tips or paper towels mm -hmm. or the toilet paper. So, make sure you purchase enough for each child and luckily we didn't have all 120 kids wanting makeup so we had enough sponges even though we'd planned for 50 um and obviously q-tips come in like 300 packs so we mm -hmm. had enough for each one per kid you want to make sure you're using a clean one for each kid you want to be sanitary oh. and 
Yes. And side note, latex, liquid latex, we I asked every everyone before I started, are you allergic to latex? Oh so yeah, yeah. If they were allergic to latex, you use Elmer's glue and it doesn't dry as fast, but it works the same way. Oh, nice tip. So, little tips. <laughs> <laughs> Um, also, so what worked was the music. We, uh, Chloe was very diligent about finding clean versions and coming to us too and saying, does this work? Will this work? Like, can I do this? So that worked out really well and they enjoyed it. Yeah, I thought they were going to complain because like the words were bleeped out or something, but they were fine. <laughs> yeah. Good. So I get what didn't work. <laughs> uh, so break my heart, the book drawings, but that was an error on my part because I put it in the room with the dancing and once the lights went off and there nobody could see them, nobody could see them, half of them didn't know where they were at. And so when it was time to draw, like there were only like three names in the boxes, those kids had already left. And I think two of the books just never got picked up because I tried to contact them after and, and then I had kids coming to me after, did you do the book drawings? Because there was a Alice Oseman book that people wanted. Yep. Um, there was also a makeup book um, that people wanted. So uh, next time I will put the book drawings in a more prominent place, a more well-lit place, because they would have been popular if people knew they were there. Yeah. And we did have a menu sort of thing, a handout that said what each of the stations were and the book drawings were on it, but then nobody found them. Yeah. So. Uh, better signage and you know putting things in, in a more prominent place next time um, the theme tablecloths and plates and cups I thought would be a big hit but guess what they do once they're done with it they throw it away and they and they didn't even seem to notice that they were themed like we were all like this is awesome and they're just like <laughs> well, all right <laughs> so I would have saved money um, and not done the themed like napkins and stuff yeah. um so anyway um also the bathrooms so we had a lot of kids that were just congregating in the bathroom like they wanted to hang out in the bathroom and not dance and not do anything but when you get so many kids in the bathroom that aren't circulating and then i had people coming and saying oh so and so is mad at so and so and and they're in a fight and i'm like well get out of the bathroom and go do something else then so um next time i'm gonna have i a chaperone like specifically for that bathroom lobby area um because with all of us at our different stations you know i was popping in but like not as often as i could have been Teen the drama is a serious issue that needs to be wrangled yes yes, yes. and i didn't want it to get out of hand um and stuff because it's hard enough to do that when the teens are all in one area with their phones anyway, but then you put them in the bathroom and mm -hmm. um, yeah. <laughs> and then after the after it got out, people were like running around the parking lot and they didn't have rides. And mm -hmm. I stayed out there with them, but they were they were also kind of, you know, like they're 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 tw they're tweens, they're I mean, well, they're teens, they're yeah. 13 and up. Um, teens, so like some of them were like going over, there's a fast food restaurant that's within walking distance. So a bunch of them went over there and then somebody is like, hey, we're so-and-so, I'm here to pick them up. They were in that group that left and then they were coming back. And so there was a lot of that. So mm -hmm. next time we're gonna make it so that the party gets over at 7.30, even though myself and staff will be in the parking lot until eight. Um, making sure everybody gets where they need to be there's not a lot of roaming and also um that people can get their rides and so yeah more chaperones will definitely be for next time because uh, if you say something gets out at eight well their ride might not come until 8 30 yeah or mm. later yeah um things to think of that we didn't really think of to begin with <laughs> And and that's because I didn't think that 120 kids would, yeah. would show up. <laughs> right. So it's easier to to chaperone and see and keep track of, you know, 30, 40 kids. But when you have 120 running around in the dark, <laughs> <laughs> it's a little chaotic. <laughs> okay, so the evolution of zombie prom. What we've decided um, just for like next prom that we do. Um, smaller snacks. The pizza was a great addition, but like, like we said, the kids weren't super disappointed when it went away. So we would do like pretzels or chips or something smaller. 
<clears throat> still candy though. We're still yes, candy. Yes, obviously candy for sure. Um, we would assign staff to Instagram. It worked out well with me doing makeup and then stopping to take a picture and, you know, like the kids were very patient when they were getting their makeup done, but I did have a line to do makeup. So stopping and taking a picture and then trying to get it uploaded and then making sure everyone votes, we would assign someone to do just that. And then that would be much more smooth with the whole evening. Um, posters at high school, I mentioned this at the very beginning, we had more middle schoolers than we did high schoolers, which is fine, but we do, we did want high schoolers to come and we had more kids asking, can high schoolers be here? And we're like, yes, of course, absolutely. But since we didn't actually specifically go to the high school and tell them about it, it's like they didn't know. Mm -hmm. um, so we would evolve that into inviting the high schoolers as well as the middle schoolers um keeping them inside amanda mentioned the parking lot and once it got dark outside like we they would leave and go to a restaurant and then come back we would have no re-entry you would get a hand stamp you have to stay inside um which would keep just uh, you know the chaos to a more minimum amount which would be good um and then Amanda had mentioned we would set the timing so that um, the, the parents could come and get the kids before the party was technically over so that we would have that extra time to clean up. We were blown away by the candy wrappers. Again, something we should have known, <laughs> but there was so much to clean up. <laughs> um, and then, you know, changing the, cleaning the bathrooms, taking the trash out, the pizza boxes, just things that we didn't really we thought of, but it was more like, oh, there's only going to be 50 kids-ish. Um, and then it was more than double that. So um, cleanup is something obviously you plan for, but we would have planned better in the future. Um, yeah. So our next big team to do is going to be spring fling. So um, one of the things that we were really happy to have was feedback. The kids came to us and said, when are you doing another dance? Um, like almost the next day, like what's next? And we're like, <laughs> ah, zombie prom. <laughs> so spring fling is actually gonna be at the end of March. And instead of dressing up like zombies, we're gonna have them dress up in like fairy tale, cottage core, um, spring gnomes. <laughs> um, <laughs> elves, that kind elves, of yeah, yeah, mushrooms, kids like mushrooms for some reason. Um, <laughs> and, uh, instead of doing the zombie makeup we're going to do face painting with like flowers or leaves, leaves and they can choose to do face painting or like on their arm um, mm -hmm. because we now have somebody on staff who actually does face painting like the carnival type face painting oh cool um, we'll do the button maker again because that mm -hmm. was huge um, we are going to open more of the library so we will have like the teen room and our bookstore room and our north room open and we're gonna have a station where they can make their own flower crowns. So we're going to package all of those materials um, individually, but then they can make their own crown. And it's, uh, there's a few glue dots in there, but most of it's like, uh, has wires in it so they can just twist it and make it how they want. And then also the dance part. Um, when we split the dance and the karaoke, um, some kids only wanted to do the dance and some kids only wanted to do the karaoke. And some kids were really popular and a lot of kids would come see them do karaoke, but then some kids, it would just be one kid and like two of their friends watching them do the karaoke. So we mm -hmm. decided to not do karaoke this time. It's just gonna be the dance plus all of those other activities. Um, we have signed up way more volunteers so that we can yes. cover all of the areas um, where kids are hanging out. I'm gonna be the main one at the door stamping the hand and not letting them back in and not letting them go out. Um, yeah. And so, yeah, so, and we are, are still gonna do a costume contest because that was very popular. They all said they really enjoyed that. And the Instagram, everybody wanted their phones and to vote. And they were actually texting friends that weren't here saying, hey, vote for me or hey, vote for my friend. And <laughs> so that was really cool. And so, yeah, so, and, and hopefully, I mean, and we are gonna go to the high school, um, so I got an in with them. That was kind of another thing too. Um, just like kind of getting into all the schools is kind of difficult because people are frazzled and they've got a lot. And so um, 
it's just kind of yeah it's building that relationship i think too with the schools um mm -hmm. and that is kind of a piece of it but you know hopefully i think we're going to have a good turnout for spring fling and then we'll kind of if that works out we'll do another sort of dance in the summer so hopefully we can kind of have like a kind of a quarterly dance sort of thing but i think it is important to offer those other activities like the button maker and stuff it's yes. not just the dance um the costume aspect of it the makeup aspect of it yeah. um so yeah fortunately zombie prom turned into like a really good template for us to go forward and for the kids to give us ideas and to tell us what they what they liked which was candy buttons and costumes <laughs> <laughs> makeup yeah so this is the last picture we have for you and that's chloe we've been talking about her but now you get to see her and myself and amanda on the night of zombie prom and um if you have questions we would love to take them now obviously but you're more than welcome to email us and then our slides will also be up for availability and yeah and our website our facebook too. yeah and our website and you can see all of our programming so are there any questions awesome. Yeah, we do have a few um, here. Great. Um, thank you so much, Amanda and Chelsea. This was this was yeah. so much fun. Um, great program, some as someone said. Um, really cool hey. idea. Um, yeah, if anybody does, <coughs> excuse me, have any questions, go ahead and get them typed in um, to the questions section, and we'll get them um, answered. Uh, since we are the last session of the day, we don't um, have anyone coming in after you. We can get to all the questions we have of, of uh, hopefully. Yeah um so uh so th was this a question was this done during a time when the library is open or was this when uh like the library is closed and this is like an after after library hours yeah, thing that's a really good question um we decided to do it uh we close at five o'clock on fridays and we chose to start the zombie prom at six o'clock on a friday so it was while we were closed and i would recommend that because if we were to do it while we were open we would also have people trying to check out books and that would be just so much chaos pandemonium <laughs> pandemonium yes so i recommend doing it while you're closed or at least during a time where you don't have to worry about just random people coming in and, and out. the music was very loud yes so i mean for for having just the kids and us old people that are dressed up like zombies <laughs> hanging out with the kids um that's not disruptive because but like if we had that that loud of music happening with anybody else was in the building they'd be yeah. like turn it down yeah no yeah. studying can be done no computer work can be done it was right yeah. right yeah and especially since you had more kids than than you expected right. um and you're going to be expanding into other rooms in the library obviously i was thinking definitely in the future you're not going to be able to have that during right like yeah we would have to have even more volunteers and even more staff and um, like she had mentioned, we're going to have uh, four actual staff and then as many volunteers as we can get on the next one for spring fling. Um, and if we opened up the whole library, then we would have to have even more even staff. Even more, so. yeah. So Because right now we have two levels. So the first time for this zombie prob, it was like half of the bottom level. And for spring fling, it'll be the whole bottom level, but yeah. not the, mm -hmm. the second level. Yeah. Right. Okay. Um, we have a couple questions about the ages of the the kids that you had there. Um, did you have any worry about mixing middle school and high school ages together? Um, someone also also says it's hard. I think it's hard to combine tweens and older teens. Um, yeah. Um, how well, did that did, go for you all? Well, we did do the thirteen and older specifically. Um, and like we said, we didn't have a ton of high schoolers, but we did have. I don't know if it was younger siblings or friends that were like, can my friend come there in high school? Can my sibling come there in high school? I was going to say, I think it was a friend group. So the high schoolers we got were a friend group. Um, so they, but they were hanging out with everybody. Yeah. And there didn't seem to be any segregation at all. Like even mm -hmm. the groups that, that normally come to the library, I figured they would stay together, but they all mingled and everybody chatted and, so I, there wasn't really an issue with the age thing. We did have younger kids saying, oh, I wish I could come, mm -hmm. but we have programming for younger kids. So it's it's like, this is for the older kids. Yeah. And for spring and fling, I think there might be more interest for the older, or there, there'll be more ability for the older kids if they want to hang out in a different part of the library or like yeah. spend more time doing the crown or something like that. Um, mm -hmm. They'll have the ability to do that. Right. And um, you just had the minimum age of 13, 
Yes. Um, was, I mean, and this is a teen event is advertised as that. And um, was there like a maximum age that you would have said, oh, come on, you're an adult. This isn't really oh, for you. Well, <laughs> if they were out of school, then yeah, no, we wouldn't have let them come probably. And we've, for a lot of our programming have been doing it by grade. So this, ah. this program is open for eighth through 12th grade or ninth through 12th grade. Ah, um, so advertising the grade um, range. Perfect. Yeah. And we make sure we put teen zombie prom or teen spring fling so that it's not like 13 and up as including adults. Right. So we, we tried to make that very specific. And then when people asked, we would say it's for teens so that we wouldn't have that, oh, I'm an adult. Can I come or can my mom come or whatever? Or one of the big things that we have with the, with the, the teens are like they want to bring their eight-year-old sibling because they're yes. babysitting or something. And we say, <laughs> No. Yeah. Like our our all uh, our like other programs feel like for like Valentine's Day, which are more like family inclusive and we have activities mm -hmm. for younger kids and older kids, then that's appropriate. You know, a, a teenager can come with the seven year old and we have stuff for all of them to do. Right. Um, but that wasn't gonna be the case. This particular event is for who it was for. Yeah. Yeah. And and I'm I'm surprised we didn't have more of a problem with that because yeah, we, it we did it. Went really smoothly. Yeah. yeah. I was surprised too. And we didn't have anyone coming to the door like trying to get in, like, I'm young, but I'm gonna make this work. And we didn't have that problem at all. Great, great. Um, have you thought about doing any other options uh for voting other than Instagram? Is there anything that would had come up or anything that kids might have mentioned? Um, the kid that would be a good question for the teens and ask them what they would like to see. We kicked around doing like a paper ballot, like you would normally just put it in a box, but mm -hmm. then you have, have to have someone man it, that. you have to read through and count it. Mm -hmm. Um, we talked, Facebook is a non entity anymore. They they're on Instagram or something else. Yeah. Um, we're not, we, we did kick around some ideas, but it's hard to know exactly how to do that. We don't want to do like cheer for your favorite because then mm. what if you don't hear it correctly? I don't know. Um, yeah. What if like one kid gets nobody clapping? Yeah. Like that's horrible. Like, yeah. yeah, you don't want to put them on dis on, yeah, like that, on display like that. Uh, and then Instagram for weeks after the zombie prom, we still had likes and comments. So I think, mm. And another thing we talked about was just to have like, if you dressed up, put your name in and then we would do a drawing. So if like at your library, you don't want to do like an Instagram or a contest, like, but you still want to have that inclusion, like everybody that put a costume together can enter a drawing specifically for the costume. Sure. And then sure. We draw and then that person wins. But it wouldn't be a contest. Yeah. And I know in the past, I guess I don't have to get into this, but like with children costume contests, I kind of stopped doing that as part of the youth services because parents would get like really mad. They'd be like, well, my kid's costume is way better. And why did that person win? And it was just like, um, okay, <laughs> sorry. <yeah. laughs> um, yeah. Um, and so you, you, the, you know, the, the so from, from what you know from talking to the the teens and tweens in your library, they're you, they are using Instagram. Um, what is yeah. something else that they might be using? Do we um, anyway Other that would even it, work? That even work for this kind of voting? I wonder. Yeah. Well, and you what have to on Instagram. They have a poll option, but you can't do that on your phone. You would have to do that on a computer. Yeah. Um, I mean, I didn't know what other social media things they are, are on. Well, I mean, they, yeah. they're Snapchat, but I don't I don't personally know how that works because I don't use it. But I don't I, think there would be a way to vote on that. Yeah, that I don't. Be. Yeah. And I don't yeah. even know. Yeah, again, I don't I don't know on that one. Would, we would have to, and Chloe may maybe have better yeah. insight on that. But but she was also the one that was really Suggested advocating for Instagram. Instagram yeah. yeah. And then that was something we talked about beforehand too. We first made our Instagram and then we encouraged kids to follow us on Instagram before the zombie prom. And we kind of hinted that you might, you know, need it or we would be using it for zombie prom. So I think mm -hmm. that was something that if there is another option, um, we kind of pushed it towards Instagram. So it worked out for us. Cool. Yeah. Um, all right, and then the last question I have here, I just have one more left. Um, if anyone has any other questions you want to ask, uh, get it into your into the uh, question section. 
Um, so have you seen an overall increase in foot traffic into the library since you've incorporated this programming? Like the kiddos are exposed to the library and find that it's a great place to keep coming back to. Um, did you have, so like, did you have new teens coming to the library that had not before? So for zombie prom specifically, yes, we had te teens that we had never seen before. Um, and then afterwards, that's hard to say. Yeah. I mean, we do have, it seems like we have more teens every other day that we're like, oh, you, they're new or, um, it's kind of funny. Cause like our, our core group of people that kind of come in to use the library, like as it's meant to be used, not to just like throw things around, um, are actually younger kids that are walking over from the elementary school. So like fourth and fifth graders, um, which was why we had so many kids asking, well, I, can I come in two years? Like, like keep doing it in two years so I can come. Um, but we've also sort of expanded our our other youth programming. So we have like a really big attendance for Halloween and for our winter program. Um, so I think there's a lot of synergy maybe happening. Um, but I think with the kids that do come in regularly in middle school, it has given us a better repertoire with them because it yes. gives us things to talk with them about. Yes. Um, and they listen, they know that we listen to their suggestions, which was huge. We put a suggestion mm -hmm. box in the library, in the teen room, and we had very thought out, well thought out suggestions and book suggestions. And they saw that, you know, they asked for Heartstopper, we gave it to them. I mean, mm -hmm. it, that has helped more probably than just having the program is that they understand that we will listen to them and we will try our hardest to do what they want. And like Chloe makes bookmarks and stuff. So like they ask for different characters or different books on the bookmarks. And so she can make them and put them out. Um, so yeah, I, I don't know if I would say that, that we have more, but I don't know. It's because we, we feel like we do. We do. Yeah. And, and I can say that like our, so we have a student provisional card and we've had way more of those yes. um, made. So um, like, I think it has elevated it. I can't tell you if it's specifically because of zombie prom or like kind of just everything that we're doing um, with programming, which is awesome. I love it yeah. after COVID and everything, yes. um, you know, and having some of our numbers for program is actually higher than pre COVID numbers. So yeah, 2019. That's stuff. awesome. So, um, yeah, we, we had some good stats this year. <laughs> yeah. So I'm just really glad that we have a good template to go on now for doing team programming. Yeah. Um, that's effective um so that we can keep that momentum going yeah yeah um oh we have one more question that just popped up which is actually i think you've i don't know if you know if this happened but i know that you've kind of solved the problem for next year potentially or next uh dance um do you know if you had any teens that showed up for a short time left and then showed up just as their rides arrived um oh. like did their guardians or Parents they, or rides they assume they were safe at the library the whole time when actually they just came there briefly, left, and then came back two hours later for their pickup. Is I that can't for sure we didn't have that happen? How but there know? was like yeah. 120 kids in there like the whole time. <laughs> there was a <laughs> lot of kids. So I mean it may have happened, but maybe they came and hung out in the bathroom for two hours <laughs> and then <laughs> just sounds like. And I don't know um, if that's anything that you would I mean, you how would you know and keep track well, of that? I, I was the one outside in the parking lot after it got over and everybody that came in and got rides and stuff were all like dressed up and decked out in their Halloween stuff and I am pretty sure I had seen them all inside so yeah. I don't think I saw anybody that like just like came just random, uh, random yeah. and was like oh my rides here like they were all people that had been at the prom and had zombie makeup on yeah um mm -hmm. so they had attended the program yeah, I think oh. they're concerned about, you know, they're telling their parents, their guardians, they went to the library and then didn't really stay there the whole time. Honestly, I'm not sure what you would do that about that as the library staff anyway. that's Well, two things for that. We did actually have um, a parent come looking for their child and found them at the zombie prom because that's where they told them they were going to be. So we did oh. have that. Perfect. Um, and then for spring fling, we're going to stamp their hands right. and then if they want to leave, that's fine, but they can't come back in. Mm -hmm. um, so we're gonna try and curb the going out, coming back in, and and then if if they do want to leave, that's fine. But and another thing, I had a parent looking, and uh, 
their kid wasn't there for pickup. So he got on his phone. He was like, oh, she went home with her friends. So the friends went to go home and the kid got in the car with them and left. So uh, there was some of that too, where the friend groups were all traveling together and people were had not planned to come to zombie prom, but like walked over and then rode yeah. home with their friends. Mm -hmm. yeah. um, and that's things like that happen, yes. <laughs> yeah. yeah. All right. I think that is it for our questions that I see here. Um, all right, this is great. Um, yeah, this was, I think, a fun event, awesome thing. Uh, need to do an adult zombie prom, maybe. <laughs> yeah, I think that would be actually quite popular. I do too. Yeah. Or any kind of like an adult dance of some sort, because when do we ever get that as an adult? We to get to dress that. up. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, we need to be able be. to to relive our childhoods as adults. Yes. Yes. Maybe that'll be a presentation <laughs> due for us next time. <laughs> Sounds good. We'll work on that. <laughs> so thank you so much, Amanda and Chelsea. This is great. You're um, for the um, conference today. Um, all right. Thank you.